Ba -da -da. Hello everybody and um, welcome back to Echo. Um, I just have to say a few things before I start the actual game. We'll, we'll continue, I guess. Um, basically, I'm now realizing that I have literally a few hours of this game left before the series is over. And I don't know why that makes me kind of sad, but it does. It's kind of the same feeling I had when I was reading the last update for the end of the game in general, the end of Jenna's Rav for the first time. It's very similar to that feeling, though not as strong as that feeling. Because that was just overwhelming, like, holy shit, this is it. There's no more of this after this. And it was honestly really surreal to see something I had been following for three years finally be over. And now the full release is a year old, because April 2nd was the anniversary. And they, like, added some new CGs to Jenna, Leo, and Flynn's routes. They added a new sprite for Chase. And apparently there's, um, short stories you can play that they added, which is cool. But I don't know if that's worth me going back and showing you guys, because that would require me to go back through all the routes. And, well, not all the routes, just Flynn, Flynn's, Leo's, and Jenna's. And I don't think I really want to do that, to be honest. You can, you can probably look it up yourself and find out, I mean... Anyway, on to the other thing, um... I honestly don't know... I mean, obviously we have arches and we have the smoke... Actually, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. After this is done, I'm going to start doing the smoke room again, because it's been so fucking long since I, did a video, since I did a video on that one. I mean, it's still ten days to do, obviously, so my plate's full. But when arches release it, or the next Ar arches update releases, that one is getting done immediately. Next Burrows update releases, that one's getting done immediately, as long as the computer's charged. Whatever, it's been two minutes now, let's just get into the game. Um, yeah, April 3rd, 1450. It's, uh, it's 1.59 p.m., and it's raining outside. It's awesome, I love rain. Right, we were in Kudzu's trailer. I forgot, that's right, we're in Kudzu's trailer. I'm turning the volume down, because I don't... When I wake up, Kudzu is next to me in the bed. His back is to me. One of his ears folded over his head. Folded under his head. Jeez. I've been with Leo for a few years. I know that can be pretty painful when you wake up. So I reach out and try to slowly adjust Kudzu's ear from under his head. But he immediately wakes up. He makes a funny snoring sound before suddenly jerking up halfway off the bed looking back at me. He smiles sheepishly. Sorry, I was trying to fix your ear. Kudzu reaches up, poking at the ear. <laughs> Thanks. I I don't know. I, w I was planning on giving Kudzu like a, a Brooklyn accent or whatever, but I can't do that, so whatever. I notice on the bedside table that there's a small plate with what looks like a blueberry muffin on it. Kudzu notices and reaches out for it. You want to eat? I uh, ate a couple myself earlier. I didn't realize how hungry I was. He lowers his ears. Still one left, though. I just make it settle for the most part, so I take the plate from him. Thanks. It's still dark outside from what I can see. Did we sleep through the whole day? I realize I've been completely that I've completely lost track of time. What time is it? Kudzu reaches over to the bedside table, grabbing his phone. Ooh, two thirty in the morning. From my face. Did we sleep through the day or something? No, we were asleep for like two hours. Really? I feel like it had been days since what had happened to Brian's trailer. Yeah, I found you out around midnight. Kudzu turns nimbly on his rear in the bed, facing me with his legs crossed. How are you feeling? I'm okay. Kudzu gives me a long, hard look. Again, he has the expression of wanting to say something, but he's holding back. What is it? Kudzu lets out a breath. Listen, I'm not gonna ask what happened with Brian, but if you ever want to talk about it. Talking about Brian is the last thing I want to do, but I feel the threat of violent shivers come up my spine just thinking about him. That's a fucking mood. Jesus. Kudzu reaches out one of his big black, one of his hand. I can't read. Kudzu reaches out one of his black hands to rub it in my shoulder. Awkward and comforting as always. I. I have a. 
been through some stuff myself. Ketsu catches himself. Not saying I know what you went through, but, but I know how I can feel having something really fucked up happen to you. I don't think I've ever seen Ketsu stumble over his words like this. I, I mean, I'm not trying to say that it's comparable if he, uh... Ketsu trails off, seemingly stunned by his own lack of delicacy. For the first time since I left that trailer, I feel a little bit like laughing. Reach up to rub Ketsu's on arm, feeling like I need to comfort him right now. No, it's fine, man. He didn't do anything like that. At least not how you think he would. Ketsu watches me. I know he's not going to ask, so I go on. He, uh... has a thing for asphyxiation, I guess? Oh, jeez. Ketsu's eyes immediately go to my neck. I'm fine, it was just... Creepy. That's the understatement of the year. Creepy definitely doesn't mean to describe it, but I don't think now's the time to go into details. Look out the window again, and aside from a few orange dots on the faraway, faraway lampposts, black. So, can you tell me what's going on now? Kudzu runs a hand through his head first, sighing heavily, and looking out the window with me. Sure, you don't want to wait till the morning. I really don't think I'll be able to fall asleep again, honestly. Because he can just stare out the window, and that's when I really start to wonder what it was that I missed. So, yesterday, about noon, is when I saw some weird stuff going on. Because he looks at me. Your friend, TJ, he came kind of jogging up the road. My mind flashes back to when I saw TJ running past the diner. I hadn't had time to really figure out what he was doing before Duke barged in. He said someone was after him, but that he needed to leave. Talk to you? Where is he? I feel the fur pricking up all my body. The thought that TJ might be out there somewhere, somewhere in this chaos, is terrifying. How could someone like him survive that? I'm certain. I'm certainly doing a terrible job. I don't know. He asked if I had a car, but I didn't, so we kept on up. So we kept on up the road. Up the road? There's nothing past Kudzu's house aside from Carl's. Kudzu's trailer is from Carl's house, and that's over a mile away. Carl's not a car anymore. Maybe he's just staying with the ram? I hope that's the case. After he left, though, is when things really started going crazy. Kudzu shakes his head. You know, Dale. Yeah? Dale's the only, is the only otter in town now that my family has left. He was walking up the road with a fucking shotgun, playing around and stuff. Is that out of ordinary for Dale? I want to get back on the topic of TJ. If he went up the road away from the town, we could still find him. But he was bleeding, had cuts on his leg, and his jeans were all ripped up. Oh. But he knocked on my door. I didn't open it, but he yelled through it, saying there was a meeting in the center of town. What kind of meeting? A fucked up one, apparently. Anyway, I went over to Leo's house, see if he was home, then I saw the window. As he rubs the back of his neck, his ears lowering. Obviously, I knew some bad shit had happened, but I had no way of knowing what. Anyway, I went to the town center, hoping I'd see you two there, but just getting there was crazy. So looks back at me. Jeremy's house was burning, and Janice's house looked like broken into, too. Jeremy's house? That was Jenna's house. Didn't run into anyone until I got to the townhouse. This whole thing is just getting bigger and bigger. While well, I'd been in Brian's trailer, everything had been falling apart outside. But why? What's going on? Kazu shakes his head. I still don't know that, even after they told me. Who? The older guys, Mark and the mayor, said something about this having happened before, that it was our turn or something. Our turn? What does that mean? As he shakes his head again. I don't know. They said it happened to their grandparents, that we had to be ready. Ready? Did they tell us what to do? Said to pray. Is that all they told you? Basically, act like there was nothing we can do about it and, uh... Because he pauses. What? They also said we can't leave and showed us a body. Kudzu stops talking. I stare. Like a dead body? Kudzu swallows and nods. What is going on? 
my voice rise in pitch and Kudzu puts his puts up his hands of trying to quiet me down. I don't know, but there were weird cuts on the body. They said we can't leave because something out there will stop us if we try to leave the town. I stare at Kudzu. Like a serial killer or something? They wouldn't say. They acted like it's a monster. Well, then they're lying, right? Kudzu is quiet for a moment, then shakes his head. After everything I've seen, I, I just don't know. Well, I think, trying to figure out what the hell we're going to do. We need to find Leo, at least. Kudzu nods like he's already thought about that. Maybe get, get my car and at least try to leave. Kudzu doesn't say anything to that. But if we can't leave for whatever reason, we, then we at least have to find the rest of my friends. Good Kudzu. Well, I do. I don't know what you're going, what you're going to be. Kudzu gives me a wry smile. Well, I don't have anywhere else to go aside from out of here. Besides, I went to Leo to get him out. I feel a warm rush of relief flow over me. And Kudzu will be with me. Yes, he's best boy. He really is. Also, if you remember, the town me the townhouse meeting that he's talking about, we actually experienced that in Flynn's route, but it was different, obviously. I mean, the body was still there, and they, that's like the only bit of gore they ever show in this game, and it's effective as fuck, man. I don't think I'd be able to do any of this alone. So, so we're gonna get Leo. Because who nods. Well, I am at least. You should really stay stay here. Get some more rest after what you went through. Of course, I'd rather stay here and hide until Kudzu comes back, but Leo tried to save me back at the diner. Risked his life to do it. After everything Leo had done for me, I owe him too. No, I'm gonna go with you too. Kudzu shakes his head. I don't think so. It'll make things easier if it's just, if it's just me. Kudzu shifts, looking toward the kitchen. Besides, I'll have Leo's gun with me in case something goes wrong. He was my boyfriend. I can't just sit here while you save him. Kudzu pauses. Listen, I know Leo not, I know Leo, and I know he would never want me to bring you into something like this. Yeah, well, Leo not wanting me to do something never stopped me before. Getting defiant like this is making me feel better. Gives me purpose again. Because he looks like he's about to shake his head again, but I continue. Besides, it might help things. One of us could go in while another distracts Duke or something. Because he looks unsure, so I press my advantage. And if something goes wrong, one of us would be there to help the other. As he pulls at one of his whiskers. Maybe if it's just Duke there. He might not even be there. He might be at Brian's trailer or somewhere else around town. As he sighs and looks me right in the eyes. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm not, but I'm not anyway. <sighs> well. Sunday. A new day dawns. Isn't that cool? <laughs> uh, Saturday isn't even that long. I just... I just stalled so hard and so long that it was ridiculous. We tried to keep off the road and the brush on our way to, du on our way to Duke's house. Despite our situation, the biggest thing on mine right now is ticks. <laughs> Funny how the mine works, no shit. The faint shouts and yells coming from the town are more frequent now. Another pop comes from that direction. It reminds me of the, of the gun Kudzu was tucked into his waistband. He's never used one before and took us a solid couple inches to decide if he should even stick it there. Another pop. I can't help but think that that's where the motel is, where Jenna might be. Here, though, not much is out of place aside from the smell of smoke in the breeze. That is, until we come across the body hanging from a tree about a hundred yards from Duke's house. I'm the first to notice it when I do, I gasp and instinctively reach for Kudzu. Get a hand and looks up as he holds on to me. It's high up, maybe fifty feet, but from, but from the markings on the fur, I think it's a fox. Oh, Jesus. Kudzu whispers next to me as I look away, feeling my stomach turn again. What the hell? How did he get up there? Look back and see that he's hanging by his wrist. I don't think he could have done that himself. Yeah. We both stare up at him for a while longer, long enough to notice the long vertical slashes down his back. 
Those are the same cuts I saw on the other guy. Kudzu whispers distractedly. But who put him up here? Kudzu's silent and I keep staring up at the guy. First dead guy that I've, that I've ever seen. Suddenly all my motivation to get Leo starts to evaporate. Kudzu rests a hand on my shoulder and I jump. Sorry. Kudzu pats me. You alright? I'll take you back, okay? That sounded like the best idea in the world right now. I hesitate. When I think of Leo, I imagine him in the same situation that he was with Brian. Duke didn't seem as fucked up, but I have no idea what he's capable of. That thought makes it feel as if my heart is dropping to the ground as I grip my teeth and shake my head. No, no, I'm okay. She looks at me closely with the nods. Okay, let's move back toward the road, though. I don't think anyone's around right now, anyway. I want to move toward the road, too, mainly because I'm actually starting to worry that moving further away from the town is dangerous. It really is dangerous. Duke's house is dark as we approach it. As we get closer, though, I see flashes of light from window well. Jesus, what kind of fucking decrepit-ass building is this? Good grief. Okay, I get it. It's Echo. Echo's a dilapidated ghost town, whatever. Still, what the fuck? We both crouched next to the house behind a small cluster of sagebrush. Okay, I just, I want to say something real quick. When I first fucking played this route, this ending, like, all of Saturday and all of Sunday, exhausted me to the point of just, like, I genuinely was fucking exhausted by the end of it, at least emotionally. Which is definitely a sign of good writing, because, ugh, the amount of shit these Poor guys have to go through in two days. It's ridiculous. We both crouched next to the house, behind the small... I already read that. Alright, so all I can really think is to do is knock on the door, see if he's there. I swallow. You'd stay hiding, of course, but if he does come out, I don't know. I may try to put him down right there. Then I'd come out and help. Kudzu said a low chuckle. Yeah, but again, I'm not sure if that's what I'll do. We might be able to talk him out of this. Yeah. I don't have much faith in that plan. But if he isn't here, well, we're probably going to go in and find Leo, right? Okay. My heart rate picks up as I realize how close we are to making this happen. I start to have second thoughts. Maybe we should have at least looked for the sheriff? Maybe we should have gone straight to the motel. All right. I can tell Kudzu was nervous, too, as he wipes his hand on, hands on his tank top before standing up slowly. Just watch from here. If he comes out with his gun, though, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to try anything. He hesitates. And if I get shot or something, don't help. Just run back to my house and start looking for other friends, I guess. You know, I'm really starting to feel unprepared for all of this. Everything is moving way too fast. There isn't really any time, though. We have to save Leo as, fa as soon as possible. There's no tell what dude might be doing with him. As Kudzu starts to move away, I get the urge to hug him. He's done so much for me already, save me, and now trying to save Leo. But by now, he's already halfway across the yard to the house. I hold my breath and watch as Kudzu's dark form melds in with the blackness of the house. It's like he's being swallowed up by it in a way. And after a few moments, I hear him knock in the door. I listen, trying to breathe through my mouth instead of my whistling nose so I can better hear what's going on. Kudzu knocks again, much more loudly. Hey, it's Kud, I need some help. Look up and down the road, worried someone's gonna hear his shouting. There's a slight rustling behind me, and I look back, eyes wide. I don't see anything at first, but then I feel like there's a shape behind him. God, fuck off, no. I, I genuinely fucking, like, this type of descriptive writing in horror always fucking gets me, it seems. Like, ugh, it's always that I see a shape in the dark, but I can't fully make out the details, and it's too far away for me to tell what it is. That type of shit is fucking horrible. Something crouched, the moonlight defying its shape through the sweeping brush. I squint, completely stopping my breathing. It looks like it has a tail, a really thick one. 
I'm like an otter. Hey, I'm sorry. It's just that the fucking the 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 sprite of Cholpa is literally called the hay. So <laughs> And then the fucking image of the boar being dead is look how they massacred my boar. Just uh I love these dudes. There's uh, uh. Was it Dale? I, I can't even tell if it really is a person, though. Oh my god, I hate that. Stop, I hate this. See, I remember, when I was younger, like in maybe, sec yeah, second grade, I, uh, read this one story that was basically like, this, this girl lived with her sisters on this big estate, and, like, she went to bed one night, but... She woke up in the middle of the night, and she there was like a door for her bed, and like a, like a huge wall covering window, you know, like those. And then she saw out in the forest this fu these two flickering lights, not really flickering, but just two lights there. And they kept getting closer and closer, and eventually she saw the form of a person with these glowing yellow eyes getting closer and closer. And then, uh, it was a. Mm, I'm not doing it justice at all, but, like, this was in the fucking Scary Story to Tell in the Dark books, by the way. So you couple that with the pictures in that, and, uh, second grade me was terrified, and, yeah, nah. <laughs> See, this was before they changed illustrations, because I remember they changed, I remember when they changed them, and it fucking pissed me off even back then. Chase! Kudzu whisper shouts and I jump before stumbling on my feet. The shape behind me doesn't move at all and I try to reassure myself that it's probably a rock. I jog over to Kudzu as he tries the door, trying not to think too much of what I just saw. Locked. He looks around for a while and starts moving down the side of the house. Uh, look for a window. Are we gonna break one? Maybe. Should only take us a few minutes to sweep the house and we can get the hell out. We quickly spot a window on the back of the house. Kudzu looks in and bites his lip. I'm just worried the dude might still be in there with a gun or something. Is this a new sprite? I don't know. It's been a, it's been a while since I played this route. He bends over, picking up a sizable rock. Well, not much choice. If I say run, run. Got it. I nod, and Kudzu lifts the rock above his head before smashing it through the window. Sound is probably the loudest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Curve my own ears like that's gonna what's in the sound. Kudzu jumps to the side away from the window, reaching back to hold on to me. The fur on Kudzu's body frizzes up, and I see his ears pricked up as far as they can go. Once the final tinkling of the glass subsides, we both listen. My ears are ringing, but the only sound I can hear are the chirping of the crickets. Finally, Kudzu lets out a soft breath. All right, let's go. I help, I help him push out a few more shards of glass. Once that's done, the raccoon hoists himself inside, very carefully maneuvering around the sharp, broken edges. Turns around, reaches out to me, helping me through in the same fashion. Even though I'm trying to be careful when I bring my arm in, it drags across the jagged edge. Okay, ow. Oh, jagged edge of glass sticking out from the side. I grimace, the fiery pain taking a moment to really set in. Shit, you okay? Grabs my wrist so we can pull my arm up to examine it by the moonlight and sucks in a breath. Oh, fuck, you might need stitches for that. That's when I see the blood strain to ooze up from the fur. It's only about an inch long, but the amount of blood coming out of it is surprising. Damn it, I'll take care of one when we find Leo. Pull my arm away despite Kazu still trying to take a look at it. Alright, I'll see if we can't find something to wrap it up in. Kazu starts fumbling along the wall and finds a light switch. The f- the fuck? I'm surprised to find a fairly quaint and tidy hut. Ew! Oh my god, ew! I ju oh god, no! The fucking- the fucking back of it's torn away, the foam is exp- Okay, nah. Uh-uh. Unlike Kudzi's trailer, though, there's barely anything in it. There's a single sofa and a very old-fashioned very old TV in what I presume was the living room. 
There's a fireplace and a few dirty-looking chairs on the other end of the room. In front of us is a long hall with a few doors on both sides. All right, check every room and door. It's not a very big house. Kitsu sets off down the hall. Look for the stairs. I feel like he'd be in the basement. It's because he goes into a room to the left. I peer into the one on the right. Looks like a bedroom with a single twin in the middle of the room. Take a few steps in, looking around, not seeing anything else. When I turn back around, I do see some picture frames hung up on the wall. Seems kind of odd for someone like Duke to have those up. In the pictures, I see a very mu I see a much, much younger Duke, or at least a pre-meth Duke. Next to him is a female weasel, her smile small compared to, t to Duke's tooth-bearing grin. She's in the three. She's in the three other pictures next to that one too. Weird. I would have. I wouldn't have thought anyone would want to be with Duke, especially someone as pretty as that weasel. I move on to the next room, and this one is completely empty, painted white. The next door down is the last one on the right side of the hall. This is the only door that's closed, and light and like the last room's walls, it's painted white. It's taller and seems to be a bit thicker from the other doors. When I try the knob, it's locked. Kudzu? I whisper and Kudzu pokes his head out from the door just behind me. What's up? I point at the door in front of me. Now this one's locked. He stands before the door and presses his ear to it. I see his hand hover in front of the crack between the door and its frame. Then he reaches out to my hand and puts it up to the same spot. He looks at me. You feel that? About to say no, but that's when there's a notice, noticeably cooler draft coming from within. It's kind of cold. Basement. I bet my ass that Leo's down there. Swallow. Should we try to break down the door or something? I don't. Kutsu's ear suddenly broke up straight and his eyes widen. My fur bristles out. What? That's when I hear it. The crunching of gravel. Kutsu grabs my arm and starts pushing me back down the hall towards the back room with the broken window. At that moment, I hear the knob turn and suddenly a path changes direction as Kutsu steers me in into a room on our left. It's one of the rooms I hadn't looked into myself when I see it's a storage room. Boxes are everywhere, and so is a bunch of junk. I guess that explains why all the other rooms are so spotless, and that he's not using the basement for storage. Kutsu looks around desperately for a moment, then pulls me behind a mound of boxes just to hear the door swinging open. The problem ain't that he got away. Duke is practically screeching when he comes inside as he's been waiting to be indoors before he yelled. Underneath Duke's pattering feet in the wooden floor, I hear two loud thumps, and I know immediately who's with him. My blood runs cold and my breathing seems to stop, worried they'll be able to hear even that. If he's behind all this, he's going to make things so much worse. Huh. I hear a noncommittal grunt from the bear and I shudder at the sound of his voice again. I feel a light touch my back as Kudzu rests his hand there trying to comfort me. What do you mean, huh? You like the dreams you're having right now? Because trust me, it's going to get a hell of a lot worse. There is smack and so much imagine the Duke's tiny hand trying to slap Brian in the face. What the fuck you staring at? Duke's grating, nasally voice echoes around the carpetless house. Your window. There's a moment of silence as I hear some shifting around, and suddenly hear Duke's footsteps br bustle down the hall. Deck more deep line the box as he passes the doorway to our room. Fuck! Fuck! Is someone fucking in here? Uh, Brian's lumber down the hall, basically standing right in front of our room. Your two more thumps and a bunch of rustling as Duke ineffect ineffectively beats at the bear's bulk. Fucking idiot, they broke in! I hear a jingling of keys as Duke continues to shout. Check every fucking room, I'll bet they broke through the basement window too, fuck! Now that he says it, breaking through the basement window might have been a better idea. Looking between a crack in the box as I get a flash of the weasel walking past the door again. He's holding something long and shiny. I shrink back against the box as wondering how in the world I got here. As I stare at the ground, I also wonder if I'm about to have a heart attack. Focus on watching the blood seep from my arm, pull into the wooden floor next to me. I hear a key go into a lock and a doorknob turn. I swear to God, if that wolf ain't down there, then I'll blow your goddamn face off. 
Duke's voice fades away, followed by receding footsteps down the stairs. The heavy footfalls of Brian start to move around slowly toward the, uh, toward the under end of the hall. Because he moves his hand up to my shoulder. I look at him and he holds a finger up to his lips then points in the direction of the broken window. I don't want to move at all. In fact, I'd rather sit here and just disappear into the floor. Somehow, though, I'm able to force myself to my feet as Kudzu tugs me up. We move very slowly to the doorway. And there, Kudzu holds up a hand, making me pause. I watch his ears perk, flicking in the direction of Brian. My hearing probably isn't nearly as good as his, but I'm still able to pick up the bear's heavy, labored breathing. I hear some shuffling and then some heavy footsteps. Kudzu freezes, we both listen to the bear move back in the hallway, then his footsteps fade away. I imagine he's moving to another room, and that's where Kudzu finally peers around the corner. I hold my breath, but Kudzu reaches back and grabs my wrist, pulling me into the hallway. It's empty, and as quietly and quickly as we can, we move to the end of the hall to stand next to the broken window. Kudzu sticks one leg out the window before bouncing his entire weight in both hands. Both his hands that are resting on the bottom ledge. Like a gymnast, he moves the other leg out and quietly drops the ground outside, his head narrowly missing the top ledge. I don't know if it's because he's a raccoon or an actual gymnast, but there's no way I'm able to do that. Kudzu's already reaching for me, though. His eyes wide with frantic worry. I can hear shuffling sounds behind me again come from the rooms. Kudzu reaches out towards me, then suddenly waves his hand wildly in the direction of the room right next to me. Heart pounding, I almost stumbled through the doorway into the room. This one of the few chairs stacked up against the side of the wall in what looked like a closet door. Brian's footsteps thump down the hall again and almost gasp as I get a glimpse of his massive shadow through the doorway. But then it disappears as I hear his footsteps move into the room right next to me. Just inside the room, I see Kudzu slowly pop up back, pop back up in front of the window, then frantically motion, and motion frantically toward himself. My legs are like jelly though, and I hesitate. Then there's a raspy, dragging sound in the room next to me that almost makes me jump. It's the sound of a cardboard box being slid across the floor. I hear Brian mumbling. Hmm. Definitely not paint. Forced my numb feet to stumble out into the hallway toward the window. Kudzu reaches for me, his eyes desperate, but then I hear the shuffling behind me again. Why is he moving so fast now? Automatically, I step back, back in the room while Kudzu be used to beckon to himself. Brian's lumbering footsteps move down the hallway, slowly in my direction. Kudzu is ducked back down, out of sight. I'm alone. I'm trapped. I remember the closet the last minute and lunge towards it, not having enough time to worry about the sound I make. Somehow, the closet door glides open with hardly a sound, as if the hinge had just recently been greased. I step inside and swing the door shut, trying to let it snap closed. At that exact moment, Brian's lumbering gait enters the room. I shrink back against the wall, holding my hands on my mouth, trying not to breathe. My heartbeat is so loud it's the only thing I can hear as it pounds in my ears. I hear coughing and grunting going behind the door, then it goes quiet. I wait unsure whether the bear is left or not. Slowly, I walk up to the door, pressing the side of my head gently against it. I listen, trying to see if I can hear anything. I swallow, then reach up to rest my hand on the doorknob. I think about making a run for it, maybe trying to dive through the window. I might get hurt, but if I'm able to get away... I wait f I fade for what feels like two or maybe three minutes. It's complete silence on the other side. I wait even longer to the point where I'm sure there's no way someone like Brian could keep that quiet that long. So slowly, as slowly as I can, I push the door open, and it immediately comes into contact with something on the other side before it's even a foot open. Soft, whatever it is, and the door almost bounces back from it. I wait for a moment then, as, I'm, as if I'm starting to realize what just happened, a massive bear paw reaches around the edge of the door. In the next half second, the door is ripped open, I feel myself facing Brian. A weird, numbing feeling re spreads down to my crotch and my legs, I sag in front of the bear. My mind refuses to think, even process what I have seen. What is it? What it does process is pure terror. Brian seems to have, tr have trouble understanding what he's seen as well. He stares at me for a few seconds, his eyes practically crossing as he focuses on me. Then he grins. Hey! You? I can't respond. Instead, I press back into the closet, flatten myself against the wall as he reaches out to me. Still, there's much I can do as he grabs the front of my shirt and yanks me out of the closet. 
he starts to pull me toward the doorway, and as I stumble into the hall, I'm finally able to start trying to move again. Seeing the window, I lunge towards it, Brian's grip is too strong. I hear a few popping sounds as some threads of my shirt give out, and Brian yanks me back violently. Everything goes black as something massive knocks up against the side of my face, and the next thing I know, I'm thrown down the hall, flat my back. I'm staring up at the ceiling, watching it slide sideways above me like it's painted on like it's painted onto a treadmill. My right foot is hiked into the air, and I realize that Brian's dragging me down, drawing me along the floor now, back toward the end of the hall. The fur on my back glides easily over the hard wood, my, my shirt scrunching up to my chest. I have to fucking say something real quick. I was getting fucking chills. Like, my body went cold in that closet. Fuck, it was like ice water was dumped on me. Brian stops as he reaches the white door, pushing it open. Dizzily, I look up at the window, wondering if Kudzu is there and if he can see me. Reach towards, but that's when I'm being dragged again, and I land, land painfully on the first step. I gasp and turn sideways, so that as Brian drags me clumsily, then the rest of the steps, my spine isn't taking the rest of the corners. It's dark, and the air turns cool and musty. We finally reach the bottom of the steps, pain pulsing at various points in my body from the rough handling. Brian starts dragging me again, and I finally realize he's going to have me trapped again. He'll do whatever his sick mind thinks up, and there won't be anybody there to stop him. No. I moan and try to grab onto something, anything to stop him from being pulled deeper into his, his basement. I hand managed to latch onto a wooden beam next to the stairs. Brian gra grunts as my body is pulled, snapped into full extension. We're brought to a halt. Come on, let's go. Keep clinging to the bay. Imagine that any moment Kazu is going to come running down the stairs, gun in hand. That comes to an end as Brian kicks me in the chest and I let go of the wheeze. You know you're the one making this difficult, making this hard on yourself. He starts dragging me again as I curl up and cradle my chest, vaguely hoping that he didn't give me a heart attack. That he, he give me a heart attack and that I'd be free from all this. I swear to God, if you lie to me, Leo, I'll paint the scene with your fucking brains. Why am I still here if someone came to save me then? The sound of Leo's voice has me snap my eyes open again. What well, isn't quite as heartening as Kudzu barging with a weapon is definitely relieving to hear his voice again. Then dragged through another hallway, through another doorway into a brightly lit room, the fluorescent light buzzing overhead. As I come to a stop on the cement floor, the room goes quiet, and I squint against the sudden light. The walls on all sides are covered in shelves that are filled with silver tins and soup cans. The storage room is some kind. Duke is standing in the middle of the room, next to a metal chair, staring at me. In that chair is Leo. His arms are down at his side, and I can see they're both handcuffed to the side of, his, side of the chair. His feet are similarly strapped to the chair's legs. His face is one of shock as he also stares at me open-mouthed. Stare back, even feeling really self-conscious as he watches me. Duke breaks the silence. I knew it! Duke is snarling, but it's not at me. Instead, he's looking at Brian, his lips drawn back as he growls. This is what the fuck happens! Brian scratches his head. Ah, uh, oh, fucking hell. Ah, uh, what happens? Duke kicks at the air with a foot before stamping down on the hard cement that makes up the floor of the room. This! Leo wasn't supposed to know we got away! Well, I caught him, so what's the difference? Duke lunges at Brian, swinging his arms a few times to beat his fists uselessly against the bear's bulk. Brian flinches back anyway, letting go of my foot. Leo's still staring down at me, mouth slightly less open, and I have no idea what's going on in his mind right now. I suddenly realized how stupid I was to come here with Kudzu. Sure, saving Leo as soon as possible is important, but why I thought why had I thought we could have done it alone? I should be in my car right now, halfway to Peyton, twenty minutes from the cops. Instead I'm in Duke's base about to be murdered. Slowly stood up just as Duke seems to finish his beating to Brian. Gasping he turns to me. Fuck. Well, if you're here, I guess we'll just have to make use of you. He lays his hand loose between me and Brian. Pick him up. Wait a second, just... 
Shut up! Brian picks me up roughly, almost encircling my chest with his hands alone as he pins my arms to my sides. He yells me in front of Leo, and Duke stands next, stands on the side between us. It's only now I notice the puffiness in Leo's left eye, some crusted blood near his brow, with some more coming from his lower lip. It's not terrible, but it's clear he's been hit a few times. As I watch him, I can see the fear in his eyes reflected back at me. That alone almost scares me more than the situation we're in. Ah, I'm not smirking anymore, are ya? Duke bears his teeth in Leo's direction. Been trying to wipe it off your face this whole time, and it turns out all I need to, this was all I needed to do it. Duke gestures at me. You're little fuck out of, huh? Leo closes his eyes and shakes his head. Why are you here? He mumbles it almost to himself. Hmm? Duke leans closer to the wolf. Why didn't you run if you got away? He opens his eyes and he's looking straight at me. I don't know if he expects me to answer, but the look of defeat in his face makes me feel like I have to. We, we wanted to save you. We didn't know where you were. It was happening. Shit, Chase, you dumbass. Duke suddenly leans away from Leo toward me. His eyes narrowed. We? Who's we? I feel my stomach drop and realize what I've just done. I, I, I mean, all of us. I saw some of my friends out there before I came here, but I'm alone. Duke studies me closely. Was there anyone else up there, Brian? Brian is looking behind, letting go of my shoulder, occasionally to rub him at his chin. Didn't see nobody except this either. Duke looks up at the ceiling like he's listening for footsteps or something. Duke. Duke snaps his attention back to Leo, and I notice his face is practically dancing with twitches and ticks. This. Is. Crazy. Leo enunciates each word through gritted teeth, his muzzle lowered so that he's looking up at Duke eye to eye. Look at this. Look at everything you've done. It makes no sense. Duke lets out a high-pitched laugh. Crazy? You know what? You want to know what's crazy? Duke gestures at me again. Ask him what he saw out there. Duke turns to face me, swinging his hand from me to Leo. Go on, tell him. He doesn't believe me. The corner of Duke's eye seems to have a mind of its own, like there's some kind of living creature under the surface writhing around. Was it a little crazy? I stare at Duke in trance until Brian gives me a quick jerk. I, I saw a body. There were gunshots. Duke giggles. And that ain't the half of it. Houses of fire, people, and eat, people eating each other. You think I'm crazy for shooting Janice, but if you knew. But how the hell are we supposed to know why that is? Leo leans forward as far as his bonds let him, eyes wide, almost pleading with Duke. This started when you got here. Duke lowers his voice dangerously, leaning back toward Leo, their noses almost touching. That doesn't mean shit! Leo speaks haltingly back at the weasel. Does this? Duke suddenly pulls the gun from the waistband of his pants and points it straight at my face. Barely able to comprehend it before Brian jumps to the side with me out of the way of the gun. Fucking Christ, Duke, don't point at me! He almost stands up on his on his toes with the chair still attached to his body, fur bristled out over fur bristled out all over his body. Dukes lowered the gun uh, while still washing Leo. Leo slumps back in the chair, trembling. Just, just stop, Duke, I don't know anything. Duke stares for a moment at the wolf, frowning. Then he looks down at his gun as if contemplating something. Slowly looks at me, then points the gun at Leo's head. My heart at my throat and Brian has to hold on I have to try to hold out my hands. Wait, wait, what are you doing? Maybe it is just you, Ada. What? It's you I was seeing before you got here, and it was you I saw sneaking around at night. What the hell are you talking about? I feel myself start to panic as I see Duke's finger tighten up around the trigger. I don't know what's happening! He was doing his best to keep his head out of the line of fire, leaning his head as far to the side as he can. Duke doesn't seem to be paying attention to him, though, and still keeping his eyes on me. Just, just explain to me why you think it's me. Maybe I can help. 
That seems to get some sort of reaction out of Duke as he lowers the gun just a bit. The problem now, though, is that it's pointed at Leo's chest and there's no way he can dodge that. Duke is studying me closely as if trying to figure out what to say. You know this has happened before. The mind races. The, the, the mass hysteria thing like a hundred years ago? Yeah, yeah, that's right. See, how do you know that? He looks closely at me, but I'm relieved as he finally takes the gun away from Leo to point at the ground. I, I, I did some research before coming here. I'm doing a new story in Echo for school. Duke is still eyeing me suspiciously. So you know about the murder? Um... Try to think back to my research about what exactly happened. It was a while ago now, but I planned to fill in the gaps when I got to Pueblo. K kind of, it happened in the mine. Yeah. Yeah, it did. And then people went nuts. I wait, but Duke doesn't go on, filling the air with awkward silence. I can see Leo's head looking back and forth, probably trying to come up with a way to get out of this. I hope he's figuring something out, because I have no idea how we're going to get how we're going to do that. But do you know why? Trying to sit through Duke's psyche to figure out why he might why he thinks this might be related to Leo and I. Duke's breathing is leveled off, and with his calmness, there's the feeling we managed to ride out the storm. My grandpappy lived through it all and stayed in the town after. Oh? I notice Leo's not looking around anymore. Instead, his eyes are trained on the door behind me and slightly to my right. I want to look back, but Duke seems distracted right now, so I keep him engaged. Yeah, it happened weeks after the body was found. Sort of built up till all hell broke loose. Leo nods his head slightly, eyes still on the door, and my heart leaps to my chest as what might be happening. Do, do you know why that was? Duke shakes his head. There is something bad in this town. The earth's bad, the air's bad, everything's tainted. So, uh, he thinks something's in the air or water or something? I lean a bit to the left to try to keep Duke's eyes on me away from Leo or the door. I don't know about that, but my grandpappy thought that because they didn't catch the murderer. It planted some seeds in the bad earth. Duke looks at the ceiling. And grew something terrible. It wasn't until they killed the guy that did it that it stopped. That's news to me. I didn't read anywhere that the murder had been caught. Duke looks back down at me. So I don't know what it is, if it's murder or guilt or not catching someone that did wrong. I hear the softest sound of a foot pad against the floor behind me and pray that none of the others did. But it started when you got here, so you gotta forgive me for wondering if one of you did something bad. Duke starts to raise the gun again. And brought that gill back to this poison land to grow the seeds again. Jesus Christ, Duke. Okay. So, you're 100% correct. Your methods are fucking disgusting, but you're correct. Duke doesn't sound like himself at all, not even his recently crazed self. Still, though, I don't want to admit it. I start to have an idea of what Duke might be getting at. How this all fits into our history. What was that kid's name a while back that died in the lake? He wasn't murdered. You sure about that? Yes! But I'm not, am I? I swallow hard, aware that some of the pieces don't fit, despite how disturbing the implications are. But that was years ago. Why didn't it start then? Why now? Duke shrugs. Maybe you wasn't guilty till now. Maybe kids don't understand what they've done. Maybe it's cause you left and it made it angry. But he wasn't murdered. You see it happen? No, but the person that did wouldn't ever do that. So am I talking to the wrong guy right now? Who was it? Go over at Leo again, swallowing hard. Who was it? Duke starts to raise the gun again, and what happens over the course of the next minute is too fast for me to comprehend until it's over. Leo explodes out from his sitting position, face twisted with rage as he bares his teeth in a full-on wolf snarl. Though his feet are handcuffed to the leg to the chair, he's able to lunge off the ground with his feet. He launches himself at Duke, slamming into the weasel with a painful, painful crunch of flesh on flesh and metal on concrete. 
I gasp and watch as Leo starts ripping into Duke with his teeth. Duke screams and flails his arms around, apparently forgetting his weapons that fly from his fingers. The gun slides across the ground to tap gently against the wall just five feet from me. Brian keeps a tight grip on me though, but that's when I hear a clicking sound behind me. Brian does too when he turns sideways, allowing me to see the source as well. And there stands Kudzu, both hands and Leo's handgun as he points it up at Brian's head. It clicks uselessly though, and Kudzu's face is a mi mi mixed, maps, mixed mask of terror, desperation, and confusion. The, the safety! Leo is still struggling on the ground with a screaming dude, glyphing his mouth from the weasel's arm to shout at Kudzu. Kudzu's eyes snap to the gun in his hand, but Brian's already moving. He kicks at Kudzu's hands and it connects violently, sending the gun fly in the air to clap against the ceiling. Brian lets go of me at that point, reaching out to catch the gun. Oh, fuck! I try to ram my elbow back in the bear's cross, but he's not quite that tall. Instead, I get him just over his ball and get... And get... Mo oh, fuck. Oh, oh god. I, I don't like... I don't... No, go back. Fucking... How do I go back? How do I fucking go back? No. Shit! Fuck. Um... Ah... Uh, help! Fuck! How the fuck do I go back? Shit! No, no, no! Oh, fuck, what have I done? Um... What happened? Fuck. Um... 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 What if I made the wrong choice? Oh, shit. Kudzu pens over to pick it up, but Brian's already kicking at me, and this time it connects with the raccoon's face. Okay, no. No. Fuck this. Wait, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is happening? Oh, fuck. So, um, um, uh, 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 is it, is it this? Is it... What the fuck? Oh, it's, it's not this, is it S? Is it D? No, what did I do? What the fuck did I just do? I'm pausing. Okay, guys, so that was a fucking mess and a half. But, um, now, I'm gonna go for the fucking gun. Because no one's flying over Duke's gun, I realize that might be my best chance. I lunge in the opposite direction. Clumsily, I scoop up the weasel's gun, turn it over my hands until I'm holding it, holding it the right way. Ryan! Ryan, my gun! Leo's still tearing away at the weasel as Duke holds, holds, them, into, holds them up in defense. What? I turn away, crouched back against the walls. I see Brian standing over a downed kudzu. I can only pray that he hasn't killed him. I point the gun at Brian just as he turns around to face me. Seeing that he is about to get shot, the bear lunges at me, his massive paws stretching up. Paws up, stretching out toward me. Luckily for me, the gun is loaded. Trying to keep myself steady, I manage to find the safety and flick it off. I shoot him right in the face. The sound is so loud, the tiny room that my hearing goes out for a moment. Brian crumples to the floor and the room goes quiet. But only for a moment. An earthly howling sound comes from the bear as he slowly props himself up on his hands, looking back up at me. From what I wonder if the evil powers of Echo brought him back to life somehow. But no, there's a bloody hole just above his, just above his blunt nose where I can see the white of bone peeking through the red. Somehow the bullet hadn't even pierced his skull. Shakily, I raise the gun again, but Brian rolls away to the door with speed that shouldn't be possible for a bear his size. He's gone, staring for a moment, wondering if I should run after him, but a snarl next to me as next to me as me pointing the gun at Luke has me pointing the gun at Luke instead. Duke instead. Leo's still tearing into his arms, the Duke hollers at the top of his lungs, trying to cover his face. Leo, stop, I got the gun on him! He looks at me with his wild eyes, pausing for a moment before Soy letting go of the mustelid's arms, bloody drool hanging from his chin. Try to ignore that and keep the gun trained on Duke's head as Leo flops to the side in his chair. After that, seeing how little after seeing how little 
the bullet had affected Brian. I'm not so confident it will do much damage to Duke. Maybe bears just have thicker skulls, but I'm more worried that the gun is shit. Duke doesn't move, though, as he lays back against the concrete eyes, eyes closed, gasping for breath. His arms are at his side, both of them leaking blood onto the ground. Leo really did a number on them. He definitely needs to go to the hospital. A hand touches my shoulder and I jump. Look back and see that it's Kudzu. Sorry, you okay? Leo's gun hangs loosely from one of his hands. What? Kudzu, you fucking saved our lives! He grinned him as I almost sobbed with relief. I want to hug him, but I have to keep the gun undo. Of course, I'm sorry I didn't stop when he took you. I, I wasn't sure what to do. He touches my shoulder again and I can feel him trembling. Don't worry about it, we're okay now. Um, can someone please get me out of these handcuffs? My arms are fucking killing me. Killing you? You ripped mine apart! Duke is practically sobbing now, curling up on his side, all his arms to his chest. Fuck you, asshole! Leo spits at him as he tries to adjust his position on the floor. Where are the keys, Duke? Duke takes in a shuddering breath and holds it for a few minutes before answering. Right pockets! As he walks over and kneels next to the weasel, sifting through his pocket. Keep an eye on the door, Chase, in case Blubber Gut comes back. I try to angle myself so I can keep my eye on both the door and Duke, even though I'm pretty sure the ladder is through at this point. Kudzu pulls. Kudzu pulls the small metal key out before moving over to Leo, fumbling around for a good while before the handcuffs finally drop to the ground. Leo kneels there for a moment, wringing out his wrists. You okay? He smiles at me. I'm a little sore, but I think I'll be alright. He gets unsteadily to his feet, taking a pair of handcuffs up with him, before bending quickly to give me a kiss on the head. So happy you're okay, Chase, and thank you, Kudzu. He slaps the raccoon in the back before turning his attention to the weasel. Duke notices and quickly curls up tighter. I was just trying to help everyone, hey! He grabs him by his bloody arm before yanking him out to his feet. The weasel screams double as the wolf twists those arms behind his back, handcuffing them. Why the hell do you have so many handcuffs anyway? Duke starts sobbing again until Leo whips him around and slaps him across the face. Duke sways, stunned by the power of the blow before Leo brings him, brings back the hand and hits him hard on the other cheek. Okay, Leo, that's enough. Shut the fuck up! Leo. Leo ignores Kudzu as he pulls the chair back up and throws Duke into it so violently it almost tips over. Please, I'm sorry, I just want to- Duke cowardly Leo raises his hand again. I realize how tightly I'm holding onto the gun and though I'm pulling at the ground now, I'm sure to take my thing finger off the trigger. But Leo's violence is a little disturbing. It's almost comforting to have him throw his weight around after other weasel had threatened us. Kudzu on the other hand doesn't look comforted at all. He's still trembling from the earlier fight, and he's pulling at the fur in his chin as he watches Leo. Careful, Leo, let's take him into the cops or something. As he looks over his shoulder at the door. I want to paint was probably a better idea now that I realize how messed up everyone is. Yeah. I mean, if that monster they're all talking about isn't real, wouldn't it have been, would have been better to risk that than get involved with these idiots? I hadn't even thought about the supposed thing he made when leaving the town. Seems silly now, but it'll just stupid story like that keep us here. Leo doesn't seem to be listening. You're a fucking lunatic, Duke. Why, why, should I, why shouldn't I just kill you right now? Leo! Leo looks over his shoulder at us, finally shaking his head at Kudzu conspiratorially. Kudzu goes silent. Leo goes back to staring down at the weasel. Now explain to us what the hell is going on! Leo leans in closer with his bloodied muzzle and Duke cringes back. Tell the truth and maybe I'll let you go. Leo glances at me. I won't kill you at least. He's trying to make it clear to me that he's just trying to scare Duke. At least that's what I hope he's doing. I already explained. Duke's eyes dark back and forth between us. While well, he's kicking his feet around with a high-pitched whinny voice makes me think of a child. A really ugly, malnourished child. Still feel a little bad for him, though. Remind me, because I was a little fucking distracted. Kudzu sells up next to me and sits his hand on my shoulder. You want to watch the door? 
touched his hand, acknowledged him, and turned around to face the door. I don't really think Brian's going to be coming back, though. I told you, something bad's happening. We need to figure out what. Uh, yeah, but how does kidnapping us help anything? Ah, uh, ah, uh. Took sighs deeply, and I glanced over my shoulder to see him slumping in defeat. Last time this happened, it might have been caused by a murder. Not the murder, but that the guy got away with murder. There's a moment of silence. Okay. Leo's tone demands that Luke go on. So the guilt from the guy or the worry in the town or just spirit tech, I don't know. Maybe all of that, but it came together to make everything go crazy. Okay, sure, but how does this have anything to do with us? I saw us. I saw the Otis sneaking around town before you says they got here. Back in and see Duke looking at me. So is Leo. Same kind of fish to me, so I thought it might have something to do with it all. It was my only lead. Leo doesn't respond this time. Look back again and see that he's still looking at me. What is it? You told me yourself, Leo, that you saw him sneaking around too. It was someone else. How the hell do you know that? What are you guys talking about? Kudzu, can you watch the door? I'm gonna turn around. Leo leans one hand in the back of Duke's chair as he sighs. If you remember, Chase, I told you about how I saw someone out my window that looked like you. Leo turns his glare back onto Duke. Got drunk with this ass and accidentally told him about it too. But we both saw it, isn't that a little bit strange? Some otter came by the town that looked like Chase, what the hell else was it? Leo glances back at me like there's some doubt in his eyes. I mean, you weren't here, right? Of course I wasn't. I know, I know, just making sure. Leo turns back to Duke. Why would that mean anything anyway? Duke looks around as Ali clenching his toes. I've... I've heard stuff about doubles, like doppelgangers or something. Doppelgangers? Sure, but people talked about that shit happening back then. Seeing themselves and stuff. Okay, so if you believe that shit, why would it mean he has anything to do with anything? Well, my Brett, well, my grandpappy said that the guy that did it was in two or three places at once sometimes. There's a moment of silence we all absorb that information. Sounds like a load of shit to me, Duke. <laughs> so wait, so Cliff told Duke about Sam then. Oh my god, okay. Duke jumps up in his seat. I'm just telling you what I know. So what's your solution to all this then? I don't know, it stopped when they got the guy. Duke cowers in the ditch and glances at me. Leo follows his gaze and his eyes turn steely. Duke seems to notice Leo's change, sudden change in demeanor. Before he can do anything, he gets a massive slap from the wolf. Leo, stop it! Duke immediately starts sobbing again and curls in on himself. Me? This fucker wants to get a chase! It did seem that way. Did Duke think the only way to stop all this, pro all the problems in the town was to kill me? Duke. Because he tries a different approach, his voice much gentler than Leo's. The problem with your theory is that Chase hasn't killed anyone, right, Chase? Of course not. Of course not. So maybe we just need to rethink things a little, huh? Or maybe he can do that in a fucking jail cell. We're going back to rent my van, we're gonna get the hell out of here. If we can, I'm still not sure about that thing the mayor was talking about. What thing? A uh, monster something. The mayor told us it's killing people and we're trying to leave. Leo stares. Has the town really gone that fucking insane? Katsu shrugs. There were bodies. Jesus. Leo looks around. Well, it still sounds like bullshit, but if there is anything, we'll be fine we leave, if we leave in the car. The motel is closer, we use my car instead. Sure. You could still stand with a hard look. 
get the feeling that despite all the things we just told him, he's not buying it. Leo holds the weasel off the chair, gain a little squeak of pain from Duke as he forced to break eye contact with me. What about the others? We're gonna try to find our own. We, we can before we leave, but the priority is to get ourselves to a police station. Leo pulls me to us to stand in front of him before gesturing at Kudzu. Kud, take the gun. Safety's off now. Kudzu visibly frowns as I hand it to him. Yeah, sorry about that. I want Chase to see us. I don't trust these fuckers. I try anything. Especially if Brian comes back. So with Kudzu leading the way, we make our way out of Brian's house into the night. It's quieter this time around as we head out into the deserted night street. Seems like things have settled down a little, at least. Kudzu's fur is still bristled out in the back of his neck. I'm starting to worry about him. He's been tense, even considering the situation we're in. Keep your eyes peeled anyway. Of course. I've also been sensing a strange sort of tension between the two of them. They can probably be put, probably be put up to the situation currently at hand, though. We're all on edge. I can see the motel ways down the road, but ominously the lights are all out. Duke has gone quiet for the most part. I wonder if he's just given up or if he's planning something. Hopefully it's the former. I'm not really seeing anything out of the ordinary here. Okay, I'm gonna try to have a voice for him. Trust me, things are fucked up. No. Trust me, things are fucked up. We passed a diner, the moonlight glinting softly off its metal edges. A dark, sick feeling sets in as I stare at the black windows. That's where it all started. Should we... Should we check to see if she's still there? Leo's quiet by me for a moment that clears his throat. Don't see why we need to do that. I don't know, to tell the cops about it or something? If the cops haven't been here, then I'm sure she's still in there. No use looking inside. Alright. Hey, it's gonna be okay, alright? Not for Janice. Leo doesn't say anything to that as we continue down the road, finally reaching the motel parking lot. Keep moving. I look behind me and see that Duke stopped, still looking back at the diner. I see some. What? Kudzu stops too and looks back at us. Something. Look at the diner, but I see nothing moving in the windows or in front of it. It's way too dark to see anything in there anyway. Leo prods at Duke's back, but he's refusing to move, rooted to the spot. Am I gonna have to carry you? Leo lets go of Duke for just a moment, reaching up to turn him around, probably to throw the weasel over his shoulder. Before he can do that, Duke screams long and loud, and it raises all the hairs on the back of my neck. Before Leo can stop him, the weasel takes off into the night, away from the diner, toward a grouping of trees and bushes on the side of the road. Leo curses and immediately goes after him. Kudzu starts to follow. Don't follow me, wait by the wait by the car. Leo shouts over his shoulder before disappearing into the brush. Then more faintly. And watch Chase! Kudzu and I stare into the darkness, listening to the two of them crash through the brush before fading out into silence. After a few moments, Kudzu rubs his head and turns to me. Well, guess we should get to the car then. I frown, not really worried that Duke can do much to Leo, but rather that they'll, turn, that they'll run into someone that could. Shouldn't be hard to catch him, he's in handcuffs. Duke can be fast when he wants to be. Fuck. I feel like we should have gone with him. I keep staring into the darkness of the brush, and Kudzu puts a hand on my shoulder as he passes. Don't worry, Leo can take care of himself, especially when up against someone like Duke. Handcuffed Duke. Yeah. Reluctantly, I follow the raccoon. Leo's brief presence had been so strong and reassuring, it's kind of jarring to be without it again. At the same time, though, it's not all that's different with Kudzu. Not all that different with Kudzu. Leo's just... more overpowering with it, I guess. Push my keys in my pocket, then suddenly realize where we're at. Hey, we should check out our room. T Jenna or TJ might be in there, maybe some of the others. Kudzu looks at the dark motel, scanning the rows of doors. Yeah, we should, but I think we should wait for Leo. I don't really trust anyone right now. I realize he's implying that one of my friends could have gone insane, too, and I also realize I can't blame him. When I saw what I've heard, TJ might be acting the same way as Duke. 
That thought caused my stomach to churn sickly. Listen, uh, uh, I gotta pee real quick, okay? Okay. I'm just gonna go behind that corner. Went over the side of the motel. No problem. I'm getting just a little annoyed that everyone is acting like I'm a little kid that needs to be watched. Cool, I'll be right back. Because there's a little job before disappearing around the corner. I lean back against the door of the car, swinging the keys around a finger. It's completely quiet now, and I haven't heard a single gunshot since we got outside. I wonder if everyone that's been fighting is dead now. Or maybe they just realized how ridiculous the mayor's story was and left. Thinking about the supposed monster that I definitely don't believe in, though, has me looking over my shoulder in the darkness. Images of a hanging body cross my mind. Shit. Go where Kudzu went. It's been a little while. Shouldn't be done by now. Pop from the brush car across the street makes you jump. Leo? My voice comes out in a whisper. There's definitely something there. Its form stands out just a shade darker than the trees behind it. it. Might be a brush, but it looks thin, like a person. I squint at it, and that's when I see the glint of two eyes in the darkness. I freeze. Whoever it is, they're not responding to me, and that's definitely not a good sign. Decide that I'm just not going to move until Kudzu gets here. Yeah, and if it does move, I'll just run over to where Kudzu went. I don't think he'll mind me catching him. With his pants down, if there's a fucking psychopath chasing after us. I see a thick tail swish out to the side of the dark thing. Slowly, I feel behind myself with the keel of the car door, sliding the key in and locking it. Actually, I'll just get in the car and... Footsteps to my right. Duke, his eyes wild as on me in an instant. He slams into me so hard I'm sent to the asshole with an impact that rattles my brain. I roll over groggily and see Duke bent over his hands fumbling at the ground. Suddenly he's moved his handcuffed hands from behind him to the front. I realize I don't have my keys anymore at the same time the Duke stands up, keys in hand. Kudzu! I yell and reach for Duke. Duke dodges away, throwing some kicks at me before yanking out my car door. Fuck! I lunge with the handle, but I see the weasel slam down the lock to say reach it. Kudzu comes running around the corner just as Duke starts up the car. Duke! I shout usually as Kudzu. I Kudzu as Duke peels out, yanking the handle from my grasp and forcing me to hop back a step to stop from being run over. Of course, I think the dude's just going to take off down the road and get the hell out of Echo. I have no idea that he's going to turn sharply in the parking lot and come straight for me. Chase! Kudzu screams at me just 20 feet away now, but there's no time. The car is coming at me. I jump to the left, but Duke easily follows my movement. I see the license plate and the headlights, which Duke hasn't turned on. I jump and land on the hood of the car as it hits me. I feel like my body's falling through, falling through the air. I see the stars and the moon. Then I land. Oh boy. Oh boy. Time for this. Okay. The desert stretches and wind winds in the distance, rising and falling with the mountains, hills, and valleys. It's endless, monolithic, passionless, except here. Its mark is clear on the land, like a stain, a blemish in the beige patchwork of the wilderness. The earth's bad, the air is bad, everything's tainted. Tainted. The mark is old. It's ancient. Been here longer than people. All people. And they knew it too. Everyone who's been here knows it. So do you, even though you're not from here. You were drawn to the stain like all the other evil that's planted itself here. You can see it right now through the otter's eyes. You can see its influence stretch above you like black tendrils into a dark red sky. They stretch, search, reach for anything alive to stain, anything to touch, anything to touch. So it is. So it will always be. Chase! Okay, 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 I need to stop here. Because that is amazing.
I fucking love that. That is so cool. My god. That is like the first sign that I remember when I played this, that you weren't playing as Chase, that you were playing through his eyes instead of actually being him. And that, that revelation genuinely fucking unsettled me the first time. God. Such a good game. I stared gargly up at the face above me. A swirling mess of gray and black before I'm able to focus on the nose just inches away from my own. That crossed my eyes, which hurt, so I closed them again. Chase? The voice is gentle this time, though no less concerned. I try to reach my hand up to, reassure, to assure whoever it is that I'm fine. I feel the soft, velvety, velvety sensation of an ear catch between my fingers, and the person above me stills. What happened? Are you guys okay? Mumble thickly past lips that see, that don't seem to cooperate with words that don't seem to make sense. Are you? He hit you really hard. I feel a hand run over the top of my head like it's looking for something. Did you reach your head? I feel my own head, get my other hand resting on Kudzu's head. That's right, Kudzu. I push myself up suddenly, realizing where I am and what just happened. Look around the night, the surreal feeling of regaining consciousness in, the, in this nightmare, making it all the more horrific. Shit, where is he? I push myself up, but Kudzu holds me down firmly. Duke, you took off somewhere. Kudzu looks around, his ears pointed up as if listening before looking back down at me as I try to sit up again. You need to stay down for now, something might be injured. I think I'm okay, just a little bit out of it. Kudzu gazes down at me, and for a moment I'm left staring in, into his deep, dark eyes. That's when the sound of feet slapping against asphalt breaks the spell, and Kudzu looks behind himself. What the hell? Duke just... the... Kudzu was suddenly shoved roughly away from himself, held up in Leo's arms. What the fuck happened? Leo just looks me up and down as he holds me in his arms. Did he shoot you? What? No, he just... Hit me with a car. Celia's eyes widen his ears shoot up. Suddenly turns his attention on Kudzu, hackles raised. What the fuck were you doing, Cud? Why weren't you watching him? Kudzu flinches back and glares. He came out of nowhere, Leo. We were trying to stop him. Celia working himself to shout something else, but that's when I push myself out of his strong grip. Despite the circumstance, I'm bristling at the way I'm being coddled. Leo! He was driving a fucking car. There wasn't anything he could do. Now standing, I feel an achy sensation in my, in my back. My head spins a little. I reach my hands on my knees and wait for it to subside. I don't think you should be standing up so soon. I'm fine. Though now that I'm standing, I'm not completely sure of that. Whirring twinge and creaks pinged my, my body, but I forced myself to straighten up, facing the other two. We need to keep moving, find the others, and get out of here. Leo moves up next to me, a big paw reaching out to wrap around my shoulder. I cringe, though, and Leo takes his hand back. You need me to carry you, honey? Oh my god, fuck off, Leo. I grimace and shake my head, mostly because I feel like being... Mostly because I feel like being sling over his back would be even worse. He still doesn't rub my back gently, eyes still looking at me over as if trying to spot some unseen injury. Let's get the hell to Peyton. Kudzu coughs awkwardly. We've lost the car, though. Oh, yeah. My heart sinks. Even now, in the situation we're in, I'm a little angry that it was my car that was stolen. I worked hard to buy that thing, even if it was just, even if it was a junker. Leo shakes his head like it's a mild annoyance. Then we'll just have to use my van instead. Leo looks up at the road in the direction of the diner where he left it two days ago. Wait, let's... Let's at least check the motel, see if any of those are in a room. Uh, or I'm sure they've already gotten out by now. I mean, we haven't heard anything from any of them, though, and... Wouldn't they have brought the police or something? Leo looks back at the motel, chewing his lip. Alright, but let's be fucking quick about it. We need to get the hell out of here so we can get everyone to help. Yeah, real quick. Reach in my back pocket, point out the key cars. I hobble in the direction of our room on the other side of the building. Kudzu reaches out to me. You need help. Leo's shoulders the raccoon aside as he practically jumps to my side, gently pressing a hand on my back again. 
Stay close, Otter. Not gonna let something ha like that happen to you again. Try to ignore the tension I feel building in between the other two. More than anything, I'm annoyed at Leo. Why is he acting like this? Sure, he was always a little jealous, but right now, in the middle of this hellscape of chaos, shake my head, allowing the wolf to guide me with his hand. We turn the corner of the motel. Pedro stays close behind us, and I look back at him and give him a small smile, smile to show that I at least appreciate his concern for me. Gives me a short nod back, but otherwise doesn't say anything. Like most of the town, the back of the motel is completely deserted as far as I can see. Another pop that's probably a gunshot echoes in the distance, but I'm thankful they aren't having every minute like earlier. Again, I wonder if it's because everyone's dead. As fucked up as it is, I think that might be a good thing for us. As long as it doesn't involve any of my friends. We reach the door of the motel and my heart sinks again. I say there's no light coming from the window. Shakily, I raise the key card to press it against the lock, only to, so only to accidentally drop it. Start to bend over to pick it up, but Leo puts a hand on my shoulder, speaking gently into my ear. Don't move, Otter. He sweeps off the card and presses it to the lock. Flashes green, I hear the electric buzz of the lock coming unlatched before Leo presses down the door handle, then pauses. His other hand suddenly reaches out behind me toward Kudzu. Kudzu, have my gun. I'll give you dukes. Kudzu stares at the hand room, but then jumps as if suddenly realizing what the wolf is talking about. Oh, right. Kudzu lifts his shirt, filling with the waistband before pulling out the gun. He hands it to Leo and turn hands him Duke's gun. He checks the safety gun before pulling it toward the door. Leo pauses and then glances at me. Honor behind me. Leo nods back to the wall back to the door. I only feel a little twinge of resentment of being treated like a child again, but I'm too eager to check the room to say anything. Finally, Leo gives the door a gentle shove, allowing it to swing open on its own. I can't see anything from behind Leo, but judging by the look on Kudzu's face next to me, they don't see anything. I realize why as Leo slowly reaches inside and flips the light switch. I can't resist and peek around Leo's bulk in the motel room. I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe a blood splatter room with all our friends' bodies piled in the middle or something. Instead, though, it's basically just how I remember it. I, I even saw my pajamas crumpled up on my side of the bed where I left them. Leo holds steady for a moment, keeping the gun pointed at the ceiling of the room. Finally, he leans in, whispering loudly, Hello? There's no response. Leo waits just a little while before finally moving forward slowly. Don't wait for Leo's approval to follow. I move closely behind him, because you're just behind me. There isn't much to search in the motel room, having just the room and the bathroom to check. Once Leo's sure is clear, I shut the door and lock it before turning to their two. Just so we know we're safe, for now at least. Leo shakes his head. We gotta keep moving, Chase. We should have my place now. They open Jenna's laptop on the table, pushing the power button. Come on, what are you doing? Leo shifts his weight from one foot to the other. Kudzu moves to stand next to me. Checking the internet. I was hoping to... I sighed, stared at a password screen. Well, let me jump with my phone. Leo sighs again. That's not gonna help us. I have Wi-Fi calling. Leo sighs again and sits heavily on the bed, bending it, bending it in like a bow. He sets his gun on the bedside table before rubbing his face vigorously with both hands. You okay? Saying that Leo's been on edge is an understatement. And sure, we're all fucked up right now, but the way the wolf's been acting, it's like he's a different person. Leo lets his hand slide down his face so he can peer at me over his fingertips. He examines me for a while, then finally reaches out with both hands. Come here, Chula. Fuck off. I almost hesitate, and I'm not sure why. I walk over to him and stand in front of the wolf before he reaches out and pulls me down to his lap. Then he presses my head against his chest before wrapping his arms around me. He starts stroking the back of my neck gently, and it makes me shiver. It all feels a little forced, and we don't meld together naturally like we used to. I'm sorry about letting all this happen. I should have told the police when Duke started threatening earlier. Do you know what's happening? Leo takes another breath and his broad chest swells against my cheek before it blows out, ruffling the fur on my head. I don't know. I really don't. I know it's Kudzu standing at the side, clearly trying not to look at us. Any internet? Kudzu looks up and strokes his head. 
No, I can't find a network. Damn it. Did... Did that bear do anything to you? The hesitation in Leo's voice makes it clear what he's really asking, and it sounds like he's wanted to ask it for a while. No, he, uh... Just tied me up for a while. I guess technically did more, in a way. But I don't want to go into that right now. That whole incident actually seems like a long time ago already. Janice's murder, getting near raped by Brian, trying to kill Brian. I feel like there's a numbness in my chest that's damping my emotions right now, and everything feels like it's far away from me. I wonder if that's some kind of psychological response to what's happening, and if I'll be all fucked up after this is over. Probably. But I kind of welcome the numbness right now. It at least helps me deal with what's happening a lot, eat a little easier. Jen were all able to tell me what's happening right now if she were here. Of course, that makes me wonder where she and the others are. Makes me want to get get out there and find them. Because as much as I want to get the hell out of this place, I feel kind of responsible for them. They did drag all of them here, after all. I'm gonna get you out of here, I promise. The old breeze on my ear and squeezes me a little tighter. I have to hold back a wince as a twinge goes through my back. I feel like I'm going to be very sore tomorrow. I saw me lift my head, I saw me lift my head, I look back at Kudzu. What time is it? Kudzu takes his phone back out of his pocket to check. 3.45. I stare at him. Are you serious? That means it's only been a little more than an hour since we left Kudzu's place. I was hoping the daylight would be a little bit closer than that. Kudzu slumps down on the chair at the table. It's what my phone says. I rest my head against Leo's chest, listening to him breathe. I glance back at him and see that his eyes are closed as he continues to stroke the back of my head. I'm about to tell him that we should get moving again when I think I hear something. It's a soft, snuffling sound like someone's covering up their sniffling. I lay there against Leo, not moving as I continue to listen. A full ten seconds go by before it happens again, and this time I think it's come from below us. Under the bed. I look up at Leo again, running out to tell him I heard something without saying it out loud. Honestly, with his massive wolf ears, he should have heard it before I did. <sighs> I reach up and poke at his chin. Leo shakes his head a bit around the poke, but otherwise doesn't open his eyes. I frown and reach up further, touching his cheek. He leans into it. Leo. I barely whisper at him. Finally, he does open his eyes, and at one of my own ears, mouth I'll listen. I see his ears come up, he perk up, his eyes looking at the ceiling. I, mo I motion down at the bed. You can see Kudzu to the side of the chair, from his chair. I is curiously, but not saying anything otherwise, thankfully. This time, the snuffling sound is quite a bit louder, and I feel for Leo's fur raise up on his arms. That was definitely a person, or something living and breathing at least, and it definitely came from under the bed. Leo slowly and gently pushes me off his lap, motioning me away. Slowly, he leans over and grabs up the gun. Then he stands, backing away from the bed, then, crou then crouching slowly with the gun pointed as he looks under the bed. See Leo pause, staring, then he reaches out and grabs whatever it is and yanks hard. <laughs> Scream is loud and piercing. Whatever it was sounded like a terrified child. Thrash and kicks at Leo, and it's when it's clawing frantically at the carpet to get back under the bed that I realize who it is. TJ? I shout his name, confused and terrified myself. What the hell? Calm down! Leo's got both his hands on TJ's ankles, trying to keep him still, while at the same time not getting gouged by the toe claws. I move closer. Though not close enough to get clawed by the lynx and try to crouch in his line of sight. TJ! TJ, it's us! You're okay! I look in his eyes as wild and desperate and feral. Reach out for his wrist and immediately slash them with his other hand. Chase, stay back! I fall back with my butt and scoot away a little wide-eyed. I've never seen TJ like this. Of course, I haven't. Can't imagine what could have made him like this. Scramble up and stand next to Kudzu was just as wide-eyed as me. Despite that, he sidesteps a little in front of me as if to shield from the insane TJ. 
Leo finally drops the cat's legs, and before TJ can scramble back into the bed, Leo jumps on his back. I wince as I'm sure I can hear TJ deflate like a tire from Leo's weight. The wolf snatches up TJ's arms, pinning them against his back as he leans over the link, shouting to his ear, TJ, stop! Stop fighting me! It's me, Leo! Leo! TJ continues to arrive, making weird yowling noises I've never heard him make before. TJ, it's me! It's your friends! We're here to help you, man! His voice is quieter now, more soothing, as he tries to calm the crazed lynx. This seems to be working so far as TJ's violent thrashing lessens, his yowling fading out to more feeble whining sounds. See, I'm here now. You're gonna be fine. Finally, TJ's head falls to the carpet, everything going limp. Okay, uh, that's a good place to stop, because my computer is literally about at, like, I think... It's at 38, so yeah, we're done. It's, uh, it's now 331, if you were wondering. So, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.